less than second uh, what are your for the type of trades these days what the percentage parabolic reversal i'll actually show you all the parabolic reversals i've taken today i honestly didn't keep stats yet i didn't go through them i've taken today acb and acb i'll go through them in detail later you can see acb it was a what worked out let me mute youtube and good morning guys on youtube sorry good afternoon so yeah acb this one was a winner i'll then go into detail on it i and o two winners one loser this was the loser there um spr let me see what spr did there uh, spr spr SPR, SPR, spr was a loser and i got slippage i lost one and a half hour on this one i'll go through it later sq it was a loser though it eventually worked out tbio TBI all worked out and CGC, uh, CGC one winner, one loser, I guess. Let me actually check that. Yeah, CGC one loser, one winner. Those are all the trades today, but I'll go through them in detail if we have time later. The other steps you also trade these days and how often. I trade uh, extreme reversals and ABCD patterns. I used to trade harmonious charts, but I trade the harmonious chart only um, if the daily chart is on a breakout area similar to CGC not here I want to see that CGC let me get the pen and I'll tell you when I'm trading those harmonious charts come on if I see that it actually gapped up somewhere right here if I see the CGC gaps all the way here and it's trading around this area and the pre-market price action above the moving averages on the 15 minute chart and 30 minute chart and all the charts above the moving averages once it breaks the daily chart on the one minute chart right there i would simply just take it to the long side in this case i didn't trade cgc because it still had a lot of resistance ahead it had this level right here and it had this level right here so I, I i want stock to be at either all-time high or at breakout area on the daily chart uh, I don't want the stock to make the move in the pre-market. I want to see it trading sideways in the pre-market. If I see that pattern, I will trade it. I, I could trade it even 10 days in a row if I have it, but it's so rare to find that pattern. One minute open range breakout, two minute open, open range breakout is the same criteria. If I see that it's setting up on the daily chart for a breakout, uh, I would take it uh, to the long side as well. But this actually worked out nicely. Anyway, and what else? ABCD patterns, I trade them, but ABCD patterns sometimes they take a little bit long time to form. Uh, I could find them in the morning, but you see that in the morning, most of the time the stock just makes, let me see, INO for example, stock makes most of the move in the morning with no pullbacks, and then here you see that it's starting to form an ABCD pattern. This is the breakout, and this is a good entry for ABCD pattern, this is a good entry for ABCD pattern. By this time, I was already done, or I missed it. If I'm not at my goal, trading the extreme reversals or parabolic reversals, I will trade ABCD pattern. The past week, three days, uh, two days, I traded ABCD patterns and extreme reversals, not parabolic reversals. And the whole three days, uh, they were only those type of reversals right here. And I actually need to exit the rest here. I'm out. Hey Adrian, how did you find that ACB? Yeah, it wasn't on the pre-market show, but it was in the scanners in the chat room. It showed up on the RSI Extreme Scanner. I don't know, by this moment I did actually have, now I see that on I know there are no shares for short, but there were shares for short when I shorted it there. So yeah, let's go through the trade review. Ken traded, let's see which trade it can. Ken traded GPS and you traded a reversal pattern right there and this is actually a really good one. So GPS was extended from the nine moving average on the five minute chart. I actually like the GPS. You see also sort of a double top right there. 
a fake week right there a fake breakout week right here and then it immediately got bought back uh, got sold back down so you're having sort of an ABCD pattern and these type of ABCD patterns on the one minute chart I don't take them when they are extended from the nine on the five and what's the reason for that the reason for that is I'm not sure how much the stock is going to move after the breakout sometimes it never makes the breakout sometimes it breaks and makes the move and sometimes it just simply wicks a little bit and immediately gets back down so I'm not sure how much it's going to move after the breakout. So I avoid these type of ABCD patterns. I want to take an ABCD pattern only if it's close to the 9 moving average on the 5 minute chart or only if it makes at least 40 to 50 percent retracement. The, uh, if it's a little bit better, that would definitely um, be good right there. Now you see, it did that fake breakout. It did get sold off, made a new 1 minute low and can took it to the short side. Uh, stop loss for me would not be the high of the week right here. I would use the next level we have, which is the previous week, somewhere around there. And you see that he partialed all the way down. That was really smart, and I like it. Uh, I think you partialed more there because it was a new one minute high, which is not bad. And the rest after this consolidation right here. Um, I see an ad right here. That ad isn't bad if it was an ad. If it was a new setup, I personally wouldn't have taken it. Why is that? Because it's still close to the 9 moving average in the 5 minute chart. Here it did drop down and did bounce or pull back outfit. Here it still was close to the moving average. So if it's a new setup, I wouldn't take it to the short side because, first of all, this is the range we're having right now. If you take it to the short side here, this is your stop loss, the high of the range and you will not have a 2 to 1 risk to reward. If this was an add to a remaining position, then it was not so bad there. Uh, you flipped your position to the long side, and I would have waited for a new 5 minute high, but still this is not a bad flip. I mean, on the 1 minute chart, you see an ABCD pattern, right? And you also see a W shape right there. I'm not sure if this candle made a new 1 minute high or not. If it did, then it's good, though I would definitely prefer to see um, a confirmation candle before I take it to the long side. Unfortunately, there was no confirmation candle right there, um, but still, it wasn't a bad one. It was a decent one, and it failed. This is actually what we call a shakeout candle or a fake breakdown. It did drop down, it did get you, and many other traders stopped out, engulfed immediately, immediately after that, setting up not a bad entry for a long right there. Though I'm not sure that I would enter after I get subbed out once. If I wasn't subbed out, I would enter it somewhere right here because it's closer to a breakout area. And later, I'll get subbed out right here, which is fine. Not a bad hammer right here, not a bad wick right here. Sort of a W shape right there with a new high, but this setup doesn't work out, which is not bad there. Let's see what you did on I know, NIO. Oh, this is amazing. This is actually the trade I've also taken on NIO. I think I've taken this one here. So dropping down, dropping down a lot, extended from the 9 on the 5, right? On the daily chart, uh, is this an IO or I know it's an IO actually. I don't think I've traded this one or it was yesterday. Yeah, I've traded this one yesterday actually. Let me get back to it after. Mm, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm lazy to search for it now and my epic pen got freezed. Anyway, an IO dropped down a lot. And you see that in me this level right here, by the way, guys, it was a pre-market level. It was the f at 4 o'clock or 4 a.m. or 7 a.m., I don't really remember, but it was a pre-market level. So it dropped down all the way to the pre-market level, bounced out of the pre-market level, and closed this hammer. This is a good candle right there. Made a new one-minute high, and I actually took it two times, the NIO. I took it first time here on a new one-minute high to the long side, put my stop loss right here, and I got subbed out. After that, I took it one more time where you took it and this was perfect. I see that you nailed it from the first time. Took it to the long side at the breakout and then you started taking your partials right there. ABCD pattern, I wouldn't have taken this one. Why is that? Uh, in the pre-market, I could look at it as a reverse ABCD pattern. Okay, And right here after the market open, I could look at it as an ABCD pattern. So for that, I need to see where it's going to form the confirmation for me to take it to the long side. Will it do on the? F will it form um, a W shape on the five-minute chart? 
something like this before I take it to the long side or it will form sort of an M shape before I take it to the short side. So right here, this is an indecision moment. It's not long for me and it's not a short for me. Uh, I see that there is selling pressure on the top right there. It's trying to break out multiple times. It did break a little bit right here, but it, did, it wasn't strong enough to run after this breakout. So this is the first uh, hesitation moment for me. Tried to break a second time, which it couldn't do. And then it just simply started selling off with lower high waves on the one minute chart. When, when to look the blue on the one minute chart and when to look it on the five minute chart. Uh, it depends on how much the move was. If the move wasn't like so big on the five minute chart, it was parabolic, but it was something like this, you see, like this, only small move or half move right here. For that, I would look for a small W shape on the one minute chart, that would be enough. If the move is so big on the five minute chart, three, four candles, um, then I would prefer to see a W or M shape on the five minute chart. Because uh, you could see a W shape within those two candles right here, and that's not enough. I would want to see that W shape on two separated five minute candles. Is the exit early on GPS? Where is GPS, GPS, GPS? Let me get it back, I think I closed it actually. Um, if it gave you the risk to reward, it wasn't. What I like about GPS is this. I mean, the first partial right here, it was here. I think I would have held on to it. Why is that? First of all, you are having a parabolic reversal on the five min on the one minute chart with a fake breakout, good confirmations, you got a good entry. Then the five minute chart also closes as a shooting star at the high of the day. This is another confirmation. And also you are having a new five minute low. Both charts are going in your favor. The moving average is so far. So the first partial would have been for me at least the low of the candle if I was concerned about it because this was the previous resistance and it could act as a support a little bit after right here. And I think it did act as a support just for a short time right there before breaking it. So yeah, the first air partial, if it gave you the risk to reward, it wasn't bad. I mean, anything giving you two hours, you couldn't say that it was early. But if you are good at holding, it would have been definitely better to hold at that. I also am mistaken of taking early partials and I'll share my trade with you after uh, where I did also take early partials. Edwin, let's see what you did there. I considered taking INO at 16.89. See that? That's somewhere right here. Okay. With the stop loss at 16.70. It's, this is the entry and this is the stop loss. But I thought that the stop loss will be too wide to make 2 to 1 risk to reward and don't think it can have such a run. Do you think it can reach my 2 hours at that time? Honestly, I also saw this one and I saw that Andrew, if I'm not wrong, did take it, but it didn't meet my criteria. I also thought that this is actually too much. It already did a huge move right here from 15... From $16 all the way to 16 90 there uh, it's like 90 cents with no decent pullback right there right so this was already huge and i would have expected a bigger pullback to happen then it did sort of a one small pullback right here after this huge candle and did a new high uh i noticed this one but this pullback wasn't enough for me after this huge of a move so i didn't like it for the same reason you are mentioning right here the risk to reward wasn't here uh and how many days or how many times a day you see these type of moves happening they are so rare to happen right Edwin um, you can't expect a stock to just simply go straight up so yes you missed the entry and yes you missed this move but next time you see this type of setup and you uh, avoid taking it not 100% but most probably it will fail and you will be glad that you didn't take it even the five minute chart, just look at this. One, two, three, four, and then an entry on the fifth continuous candle, right? Uh, I have that rule where I don't even take an entry on the third continuous green candle. One, two, three, unless I see a pullback. It's like one, two, three, four candles after a hammer. It's just 
too much right there. We would definitely want to see a higher low wave before taking it to the long side, which most of the time we can find. Like this wasn't a bad entry right here. You see that it started forming an ABCD pattern, went into the nine moving average in the five minute chart, shake out right here, sold off all the way to view up and then get both back all the way back to the range for the new high where you could have considered taking it to the long side or you could have taken it to the long side um, somewhere right here when it's broke right there after this consolidation right here but yeah this was a uh, it's not bad that you ignored this one Daniel let's see what you did there Daniel traded FSLY I guess for an open range breakout, right? This is the one minute chart, this is the five minute chart. And this was an ABCD pattern on the one minute chart. ABCD pattern on the one minute chart, I guess? Yeah, I see that. So the same thing here. Look at the five minute chart. This is like a huge move right there. Um, Three dollars move. A little bit even more than that. Four dollars move. And it's just making a small pullback on the one minute chart right here. Uh, I, I like that you have taken it with the trend. The, the weeks were to the upside, not bad. It showed you that it's, it wants to break out. I personally wouldn't have taken it only because of how I see the five minute chart right here. I mean, it wasn't bad. It, it also formed sort of three bar setup to the long side. It was a setup, uh, but I don't like how the candle is looking like. Uh, the three bar setup is something I play sometimes on the one minute chart I usually avoid trading it on the five minute chart because at the same time there is that setup where I told you that if it breaks the low of this doji it could simply go to the low of the previous candle if it breaks the high it could be a three bar setup which is going to the upside and I don't love to just get into a 50-50 trade where it could simply go to the upside or it could make a new low and go to the previous low right there remember this setup it's making a huge candle then a doji, reverse hammer, a hanging man, whatever. Then a new low and it goes all the way down to the previous candle. So I could look at it both ways. It could do either that, either that right here, right there. We saw an ABCD pattern on the one minute chart, but eventually it did fill out. Uh, still, decent setup, three bar setup. ABCD pattern on the one minute chart, took it to the long side as close as possible to the support. You didn't get into the wall or into the face of the resistance and you respected your stop loss and exit right there. Not the worst setup, and good job managing it well. Jennifer, let's see what you did there. Jennifer traded I and O on the one minute chart. Was this today? Yeah, it was today. I can't see the 5 minute chart to tell if it was parabolic or not, but if you see, drop down a lot, this is a really nice hammer with climactic volume, exhaustion volume at the low of the day, bouncing of a moving average or a or support area right there and forming a new 1 minute high. What's the stop loss here? I personally would put it down there if I get an entry right here. Or if I got a really early entry, I just give it a little bit extra room just in case. Uh, I'm not sure where Jennifer put it. Jennifer, what was your stop loss right here? I'm definitely not putting at the low of the week because that's a little bit too much. Could put it at halfway of the week, uh, but I think personally I would have put it right there if my entry was immediately on a new high. If I get in a little bit later once it started making the move, I would put it somewhere a little bit there. View up, and view up is this line purple line yeah this is just a little bit too much of a room but still good you didn't use the low of the week half would have been more than enough climactic volume making a new high after drop right there this is a good entry i love it stop a little bit wide but you held on nicely to it how many hours was that two or three no it wasn't shorting this arrow right here it's showing you the moving average cross You partial right here, partial more, and then you added right here, right? I personally wouldn't have added here. This is already like starting to form a parabolic move. It's just going up, 
up, up and I bet on the five minute chart, it was parabolic. So I don't think I would have added here, but looks like it worked out for you. And you held on amazingly well to this one. So good job. I love how much you held on to it. The first partial, you held on really well to it. And after the ad, you also held on really nice to it. So good job there. Um, I get scared, get all out and wait for consolidation. I didn't wait long enough. I see that sometimes when we exit and the stock starts forming the uh, setup or starts showing us that it might go more. Uh, we just regret exiting out and leaving the whole pr rest of the profit uh, somewhere there on the table, right? Uh, and we tend to re-enter, but it's totally fine. Remember, if you get the risk to reward you want to get from a trade, then let it do whatever it does after that. Once you're exiting, you don't want to give some of those profit back, right? If this is a re-entry right there, when it already made a huge move and then it gets you stopped out and you're giving half of the profits or third of the profits back because of the greed, you will regret it, right? Uh, so if you are in, that's fine. You can add and risk the unrealized money and hope that you'll make some money there. Uh, if it's a new position and you're risking things and it's not a perfect setup you are trading, then just avoid it. This one was an 8R trade. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, this right here, Bitang, is the moment where I know starting to form a climactic move or striking to form a parabolic reversal. The increasing volume right here, the exhaustion volume is just showing you that this might be the end of the move. And you could see that it's here, it's consolidating. Then it starts to get crazier and crazier and crazier. And then at the peaks, you try to catch the first moment of weakness, short it, and then go to the downside. Let's see what I and O did after that. Mm. Let me see there. Yeah, this is actually, I think, where I shorted it. Or I um, didn't trade it. I think this is where I actually shorted it. It was 1916. Yeah, you see? This is it. This is exactly it. You see? Uh, it's consolidating, going up, climactic volume, and that's it. Right there. This is my trade on it in the morning. Similar one. But it was dropping down to the upside and then a move for a reversal right there. What was that stock? Okay, let it stay. We'll come back to them after. Brian? Let's see what you have done there. You traded AAL to the short side and that was somewhere around 940 let's see first of all the five minute chart what did the five minute ch chart look like look at these guys the five minute chart is getting way up there right it's getting extended on the five minute chart this is around the dollar move right there or 60 cents move with no pullbacks getting way extended right there and then it's making that upper week selling pressure right there and a new one minute low where brian took it to the short side this is actually really good 14 18 was your entry right here you see it's going up higher highs higher lows higher lows higher low higher low higher low and this is the first lower high after a red candle not after a white candle so this was decent you're taking it to the short side what was your stop loss there did you put it at the budgets right there or use the wick at the budgets this is really good this is what i love about that and look at these guys you could use the half the day as your stop loss but if you are using this as your stop loss it's so rare that the stock will go all the way up there if it's working if it's failing definitely it will go there but if it's working it's so rare that it's going to go there and if you're using this as your stop loss you're simply doubling your risk which means that you'll be doubling your reward in which case you are missing double R right there. So this as stop loss is more than enough. This is your entry. I see first partial at two to one or a little bit more, a little bit more partials right there when it held this area and then partials all the way down to view up. You were those 10% partials because I see there are a lot of partials or you are using different hotkey there. 
Yeah, ten percent. That's good. That's good. Yeah, uh, because if you are partialing a lot like that and you are using hotkeys like twenty or thirty percent, and I'm using most of the time the twenty and thirty percent uh, hotkeys, you will be left with nothing when it makes this move right here 10 percent partials it's fine and you don't take a lot of your position and when it gets down there you are still having a decent position right there and i love how much you 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 held on to this one there was a good place to add actually you could see right here personally there is no real good place to add and i'll let you know why i don't like this price action right here so the stock dropping down pulling back and breaking the low of the day i like that now I see that it's actually weak. It either continues going down or pulls back. The previous support acts as a resistance. I add to my position and then it goes down. What happens right here, it's getting back into the range. I definitely don't like that. So on this chop right here, inside the range, I'm not adding to the short side. And look what's happening after that. It's starting to form a reverse head and shoulders pattern, which is a long pattern, right? So definitely on this drop right here, I'm not adding to my short side because we're having a strong setup and it could simply form a higher low and then go to the upside. So yes, no place to add right here. Literally no place to add um, to your position. The range right here, you could see that this is the low of the range right there and you could draw the high of the range somewhere inside here or right here. I would use this because I see a lot of candles right here. So it will be somewhere around that. This is a, this will be like a pivot point. So yeah, most of the range will be right here. And I see that it's breaking down this range right here, but it's coming back into it to consolidate inside it again. You see, and then it's forming a, a reverse head and shoulders pattern, which is a reversal pattern. It tries to go up. It fails actually, which is good. Now here I'm interested in taking it to the short side. This is good. Uh, might add, might not add once it breaks the shoulder, which is showing you that this is actually weak and the reverse head and shoulders pattern failed. If it made a higher low wave, then the setup is still uh, valid to the long side. A little bit choppy, but still valid to the long side. But since it broke the shoulder, this is actually showing me that it's weak. Could add right here, but it's a bad add because this is already a huge move right there. I wouldn't do that. Now look at this, it's dropping down. You're still holding on to it, right? It's starting to make higher low waves, which is showing you strength. You're having this week right here after breakout of this area and it immediately gets sold off. Still liking it to the short side, lower high wave, and this is a good place to actually start considering the ad. Those, this area right here wouldn't have been bad to consider uh, shorting it. This right here, I wouldn't have considered shorting it because look at this, it's forming higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, sort of a channel to the long side, which gets broken finally right here. So yeah, literally no place to add right there. Could have added right here and it did work out, but it's just late to add right there. Here you could see that this risk is manageable if you add. If you add here, this is manageable. This is a good place to add. This is also not a bad place to add. You see that it's clearly holding right there. Double hammer, which is showing you buying pressure, but it breaks and fails and then a new low, which is also not a bad place to add. But still, good job how you manage your position and how much you held onto this one. How many hours did you get in this one, Brian? No idea. <laughs> I bet more than four hours. Definitely more, it should be more than four hours. Um, Emma, do you use the first five minute candle to help define the range? Let me actually get this open just in case. Okay, good. Uh, do you use, yes, Ryan, sometimes I do use it. Uh, sometimes I don't. Like here in the first five minutes, if it was wrong, let me get back to AL and I'll see if it, if I would have used the first five minutes uh, kind of to define the range. So look at this. The first five minutes, it went up and it, then it dropped down, right? So I wouldn't really call this a range yet. I want to see what it's going to do after that. It's dropping down and then it's starting to come back up. So in this case, what will be the range for me? It will be from here all the way to the close of the body. This will be the range for me. I see that it's actually wicking all the way down here. So this could be also a range for me. A breakout of that range wouldn't be bad to take to the long side all the way to the next pivot point and then the next one right there. Let me actually zoom it in. It will look better like that. I can tell that this is actually the range. If you call it at the open from down to up right there, this is the range. But I, I love to see a consolidation before I define the range. I see it's going all the way up, wicking down. I don't really use the wick as a range. I just 
if it's one week if it's multiple i would use it now look at this it's dropping down you see one two three i would like this to define as the bottom of the range i see that there are many weeks right here i could see that this is the high of the range the first and then this is the next one so if you are a momentum trader and you're catching the increasing volume right here for a breakout you could take it to the long side you don't need to have a technical level you just go between the range just for a scalp right there to take it to the long side if it breaks this area then the next target will be the previous area um, right there after that if you see it right here what would be the range for me it will be this one i see that multiple times it's touching it one time second time a little bit of times there and look at this this will be the low of the range for me i just try to combine them together to just make sense it was wicking right there now it's wicking right here so this is the range for me right here it's breaking that range one more time and it's getting back into the range which i don't really like right there so yeah that's how i try to look at it So are you mostly looking up for a big move up than a new one minute low for a reversal? Yeah, key chart for a parabolic reversal, that's what I'm doing and I'll go through all the trades I've taken today. Duncan, I just try to go through the pivot points we're having intraday. Um, if I see this area right here, this point right there and then I see this point right here, which was level right there and I consider shorting it somewhere right there definitely my first partial will be somewhere around this area because it was a pivot point before before it could just act as um a support right there so i'll take partial right there what's the next partial for me it will be somewhere around here it will be somewhere around there now if it breaks this area right here what's my next partial my next partial is somewhere around there you see somewhere around those areas and you see that actually did bounce out of there maybe it was luck maybe not but this is how i look at them i just try to define the ranges just to have my partial set those are the ideal partials if i'm really good at holding on to them so yes i can take proper partials i use 2r as target mostly price keeps moving beyond it and i miss me uh, more profits so so yes one thing you could do at two hours take 80 percent of your position and leave 20 percent that 20 percent it either goes to your break even 20 could be a lot let it be 10 percent for starters 10 percent let it go for the daily level you have for the first target you believe that it will go uh, go to or to the break even keep practicing holding 10 percent of your position when you are good holding 10 percent of your position increase it to 15 percent and hold 15 percent left to the break even or for a move and uh, then at two hours you will be taking at least 30 hours for example maximum and two and a half take another 30 hours or 20 uh, 20 30 percent or 20 percent and so on on the move up but for now, since you're having four money, you don't want to lose the profit once it hits two hours. Just take most of your position out and leave 10% to run. Uh, T-chart, I am doing a lifetime webinar. It will be 1st of July. It will be talking about the parabolic reversals. Then I'll be doing a webinar on extreme reversals, which is not parabolic. It's... Uh, a full reversal all the way to view up and above that it will be somewhere in september and i'll be explaining them in detail there you are welcome now let's see what we have after that mark mark traded sq set up a double bottom with a higher low on the one minute chart so look at these guys this is the low of the week right there ah, i am so mad that this move went without me but it's fine i took it to the long side there and it just got me so out anyway it's dropping down coming back up dropping down so you took it for you are talking about this trade right yeah i guess you're talking about that trade right there have a good day brian So if you're looking at these guys, right at this moment, I like this short because you are having sort of a reverse ABCD pattern. I usually wait for a W shape for a take to the long side, but this was a good confirmation candle. Unfortunately, it's not really clear right there because the candles 
I think they are zoomed out a little bit too much, but it's fine. I mean, you could see that there is an upper wick right there where he took it to the short side. So this was fine. Then look at this here. I think it's Peter's mountain, mountain pass, but look at this, it's forming. Higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. It's forming a pennant right there. This pennant is getting tighter in range and you are taking it to the long side. Or you could take it to the long side for a double bottom with second bottom higher than the first one, like a double bottom, then another bottom higher than the previous one. And you're taking it for the breakout with the stop loss below the last wave. You could put it there to be safe, but I prefer using the last bouncing area as my stop loss. That works a lot of times. So this was the stop loss right there. And then he started taking partials all the way up. I personally wouldn't add right there. I don't love adding on the way up, but this is only my style. It doesn't mean that it's right. I'm just sharing it with you guys. Look on the two minute chart. The two minute chart also looking good actually. Double bottom. It's trying to drop down, trying to form sort of a reverse ABCD with an M shape right there. Breaks down, doesn't make it to the next pivot point. And when the stock doesn't make it to the pivot point, it just doesn't show, it just proves that it's not weak. It just breaks it, fake breakout, closes as hammer and a new two minute high, which was good. Entry right there. Let's see the five minute chart. Same thing on the five minute chart. It's for forming higher lows right there. That's the double bottom you saw on the one minute chart and then a higher low right there. So yeah, that was a really good entry right there. Stop loss just before the previous one minute candle. Took small partial near view up. Second partial early, added a view up and you didn't leave anything to run for more. So I guess that was his stop loss after he had taken it to the long side. The previous body, one minute candle. This was a really tight stop loss there. Not a bad partial, two hours, and still, good job. If you're getting a two hours on any trade, that's really good. Sometimes, yes, we might feel that we might get more or that we partial early, but if you're getting the reward you want from a trade, or at least two hours from, for, uh, from a trade, don't regret it. Two hours is amazing. I started the trade where there was a first partial, so you took it to the long side right here then. Let me see, let me see. Um, right here, I guess on this candle. This is still not bad. I mean, you are getting in at the fa failure of this pennant pattern right there, right? It's breaking up, you are taking it to the long side at the break, not for the break, and then you're partialing all the way up, which is not bad as well. Nuik, so R is the amount of money you are willing to risk. Some people are risking 1% of their account, some are risking less than 1% of their account in, per, in terms of percentage. Some of us here, and I think a lot of members here are doing that, we are risking a fixed dollar amount. Um, for me, it's somewhere between 30 and 50 dollars, just depending on my mood for the day. Uh, that's my R. Uh, today it was 35, it wasn't much. Uh, and uh, per trade, I'm risking one R, which means that I'm risking $35, right? My reward, two R's, means $70. Three R's means $105. That's it, the term of R's. And why are we saying R? Because the, the dollar amount is just different from one person to another. It could be 35 for me, it could be 100 for you, it could be 1,000 for Andrew, right? You're welcome. After it took out the prior high. Yeah, you got two and a half hours on this one, right? And did you hold on for this move right there or anything or you also missed it? Lou, don't use uh, break even as a stop loss. Like most of the time, um, after breakout, stock is going back for a break even. Like, let's say this is the breakout area or this is the breakout area, I'm not sure, or this is the breakout area. Most of the time after the breakout, it's just making a move back to break even. So you need to give it a little bit room into the range. Done, traded ACB. Wow, this was amazing. Look at these guys, isn't this great? Five minute chart extended from the nine on the five minute chart. Climactic volume right there on a hammer, taking it to the long side. And what's your stop loss, guys? You don't need to use the low of the week as your stop loss. Just use the previous 
weeks like the clearest support you're having right there and then hold on at least to the nine moving average in the five minute chart or for your risk to reward good job uh, done right there this is crazy i actually traded acb today but it didn't catch the move you caught i caught another one right here i it wasn't full move unfortunately it got me stopped out a little bit and it got me filled a little bit because after i partial right here i didn't adjust my stop loss there so i'm taking it to the short side Putting my stop loss right above the bodies in this week right there, taking a partial there, and unfortunately just squeezes up with volume. So it didn't give me even room to exit at break even, it just squeezed up, triggered my original stop loss with an extra size and I exited. So this wasn't a big winner, this was only like 1 R maybe, because I took only 20 or 30% partial right there, which got me stopped out the rest at my loss. So 60% of my position got stopped out at my original stop loss, even a little bit above my original position, which is why this like wasn't a good winner there. Oh, that's smart, Lou. Uh, if you are using the break even only after you are taking partials, that's smart. Uh, I, I do the same thing, right? After my first partial, my stop loss is break even. Uh, Dan, I'm not sure if if you didn't see price action there, then not. If you didn't see shares filling on the time and sales, then it could have been a, a bad print if there were shares filling all the way to that previous daily level right there then it wasn't a bad ring it maybe was uh, a real price action right there especially that the volume was really huge right there it wasn't like a huge week with no volume so it could be a bad print and maybe not when would you move your supposed to break even yes the chart i do move my supposed to break even one if i take a partial that my stop loss is always at break even after i'm taking partials and the second thing is if I see that there is a pattern forming against the pattern I've taken initially. So if I'm taking an ABCD pattern to the long side, and then I, uh, I took it to the long side, let's say right here, okay? Then it dropped down, it didn't hit my original stop loss, came back up, and then started dropping back down, didn't make it up to the highs right there, and it's dropping right here, I will see that it's forming head and shoulders pattern against me, so there is a reason to exit at break even before it just simply flashes down into my original stop loss. So it's either I'm exiting if I see a pattern forming against my pattern, or if I take partial. No, Antonio, it's not 1% of my account size. My account is... $35,000, but I don't risk 1% of my account. 1% of my account per trade, it means $350. And for me, that's a little bit too much. Because yes, I have a $35,000 account, but this is really hard earned money. This is my savings, there is my car, which I sold right there, and salaries in Russia here per month on average, uh, it's around $500. So risking $350 per trade, it's too much for me. I started risking when I was trading $5 per trade. And I'm increasing it slowly. Now it's around 35 to 50 dollars per trade, which is decent uh, amount for me. And I'll be increasing it slowly. I just can't simply move from 30 or 50 dollar risk per trade to 350 dollars per uh, uh, risk per trade. This is the first thing. The second thing, I am not a big advocate of risking one percent of the account per trade. Why is that? Imagine you're risking one percent per trade. You lost. Two trades today now you're down two percent of your account the second day is bad the third day is bad in three days you're down six percent of your account that's too much there are some days you're having losing streaks right and there was a moment like i think my maximum lose streak it was three or four days a couple of months ago and imagine if i'm losing four days in a row with i don't know two or three percent per day i'll be down around 12 percent of my account in like three days so what am i doing i'm risking uh, let's say one percent half percent per day and then i'm risking around like points of my account per trade this way uh i think one percent risk per trade could be good in swing trading uh per trade it's a little bit too much i believe uh i live in russia <laughs> i hope so ryan yeah, you need actually 25, uh, 25, but like 35 uh, is what I have made right here. I just built up my account. I started with 25K. I do withdraw every now and then. Now it's a 35K. It's not that I keep depositing there. It's just me building it up slowly. Uh, 
I've been training live for over a year now. So let's see what else we have there. We went through Mark trades, now we're having Gram Lal's trade. Uh, Rose, I started with 25, I started first of all with 10k trading under the PDT rule. And it's not because I didn't have the money, I could have deposited 25k at the same day I started live trading. But in, in simulator, I developed a bad habit, a bad habit of trading, of over trading. I was taking 50, 60, 70 trades a day. And I knew that would just kill my account if I go live with that. I did develop a consistency, but the consistency was 50, 60, 30 trades a day. That's too much. I wanted to learn patience and waiting for a good setup. So we, under the PDT rule, we are having three trades per week. And I was really selective with those trades. I was waiting for hours before I take my first trade. And I wasn't consistent under the PDT rule because it's like one trade. Sometimes the candle comes down, it shakes me out, and I was done for the day because it's only one trade and then it works in my favor. But at least I did develop the, the good habit of waiting for the setup. Once I did believe that I became patient, I deposited 25k. Actually, I deposited 25,500. And I never went below 25. I did grow it up slowly. I do withdraw sometimes, uh, but I'm building it up right now. Uh, no, I'm not trading futures, only the US stock market. I don't trade CFDs, only the US stock market. Yeah, you don't need to start with a lot of money. It's just I'm using interactive brokers. CMIG didn't open me an account for me because I live in Russia. Uh, so I had to use interactive brokers. So Ramlal, what did you do that you traded? What stock is that? I'm not sure, I think it's C, right? You tried to take it to the, to the short side and it got you stopped out. Then you took it to the short side one more time, which worked out. I can't tell what time frame is that. It's the five minute chart, I guess. Yeah, most likely it's the five minute chart. Unfortunately, we don't see the one minute chart right there, guys. Stock is going up, dropping down, took it to the short side on a new five minute low and it got you. It, I, I wouldn't have taken this into the short side for one reason. Uh, you see, this is the risk and this was your risk based on where you stopped out. And this is the nine moving average in the five minute chart. It's almost a one to one by the time it's reaching it. And remember that the stock doesn't go literally to the nine and the five. Sometimes it's a little bit above it. Sometimes it's a little bit below it. Sometimes it's bouncing off the nine and the five. So you need to start partially before it hits the nine and the five minute chart. And that was a little bit wide of a stop loss, right? This right here, it was good. I see a fake breakout. It's breaking out, doesn't make a huge move. I'm sure you based your entry of the one minute chart, not of the five minute chart, and that's why I would uh, have really loved to see what the one minute chart did. Let's say that it got extended from the nine and the five. It gave you a confirmation candle on the one minute chart. You are taking it on a new low, which is a good one. And then you are partially closer to the nine and the five or at the nine on the five. Now, this was a good trade right here because you got a good entry with a tight stop loss and a potential decent risk to reward right there. Thank you, Adrian. Hey man, what is your long term? Keep scaling up to... <laughs> well, yeah, my goal is to just keep increasing my share size. Um, for now, with the amount I'm risking, I'm living really well on Russia, but I, can't, I, I don't feel like increasing my share size a lot. I feel that 35 to 50 is good. And remember there are days where I'm having like, my record was 46 hours per day, 46 hours. And with my amount of money I'm risking is really good. It's not that I'm always having 46 hours. Yesterday I had only two hour day. Before yesterday I had three hour day. Today I had six hour day. But I mean, there are days where I'm getting a really good risk to reward and that's decent for me. Uh, if I'm risking a really huge amount of share size with the type of trades I'm taking, uh, I could just blow up maybe. 
when I'm getting double risk or triple risk, I will be scaling up and I will be increasing my share size. I started with $5 and it's nothing, right? $5 per trade. Most of it was going into commissions. I'm getting like three R days and I don't know, one and a half R was commissions. But the goal wasn't to make money. The goal is just to be consistent. Once I'm consistent, I started scaling in. Uh, after two, after one week, it became six dollars, seven dollars, eight dollars, ten dollars, twelve dollars, fourteen, and I remember the way I was increasing it. So it just was increasing it slowly, and now thirty-five to fifty—that's really good, based on how much it started risking. And I will be still increasing it step by step, dependent on how consistent I become. My max was three hours for the day. It could be four hours after commissions, but it's three hours. DJ, it's not really hard. If you are trading, for example, uh, Tesla with one dollar stop loss, you will get five shares. And if you are getting like three dollars, you are up fifteen dollars, which is three hours, <laughs> and which is really decent, right? Uh, AAL, for example, uh, at which you can have two or three cents stop loss, you could get a couple of hundred shares it's not fa hard to find stocks to trade using Kyle's hotkeys they'll automatically calculate the share size for you so let's see what you did here you traded i and o at 950 to the long side on the one minute chart uh i would really love to see two time frames guys so that we can base uh, our entries or analysis from it because you could see a pattern in the one minute chart but the five minute chart could simply contradict it right uh here on the one minute chart it looks really good it looks like it was slowly starting to make a move this is the consolidation area it's consolidating consolidating finally it's starting to make higher highs and higher lows where you are taking it to the long side putting your stop loss somewhere below the consolidation and then you are starting to take partial i think that was an all out right there you saw that this was actually fake shakeout candle right there broke the high of the day i took your position again and then started scaling out right there one thing though a lot of partials right there right if they are 10 percent then that's not bad if it's bigger than that then i would recommend using limit orders for your targets that way you'll just let the stock do whatever it does and it either hits your limits or it just continues consolidating right um i can't actually see it is it oh sorry jake apologies let's see the five minute chart it's like two di separated screenshots right there which is not bad i mean on the five minute chart i personally wouldn't have taken it right there and i did explain why before it's just like the third continuous five minute candle and that's my rule i never take trades on the third continuous five candle because i do expect to pull back after that um still wasn't bad it broke the high of the day right there it was decent not for my type of plays but if this works for you that's really good i just prefer taking the entries on the first five minute candle maximum on the second after the third i usually wait for pullbacks right there but still really good one thing though make sure to partial either a little bit less or use limit orders for your targets just to hold on more to your winners Lou, let's see what you did there not your bad i didn't not say it's totally fine uh real i'm not using a, a fixed position size um i used fixed dollar risk so my share sizes it could be 1000 share size and it could be 35 shares depending on how much i'm risking per trade on the stocks i'm uh, stock i'm watching if it, if the risk is like one cent uh two cents three cents five cents definitely the share size will be huge if the stop loss is one dollar fifty cents sixty cents then the share size will be smaller um let's see what you did there see you traded to the short side and you immediately got subbed out. Why did you exit right here, Lou? Ah, you used the previous candle high. I see that. I personally wouldn't have done that as my stop loss. Why is that? There is no confirmation candle, right? Remember that we want to short after confirmation candles. Morning stars, uh, evening stars, shooting stars, dojis, something like that. Those are not confirmation candles to short after them but if you decide so because the, uh, the stock was already so extended 
and then it started holding a level in this case you would want to put your stop loss above the highest body you have um, to get subbed at um, if you had a shooting star right here and then you shorted then yes you could use it the high of the previous candle there yeah I'm using Cal's hotkeys I have 35 risk uh, hot button I have a $40, 45 and $50 Real, it depends, and actually, since we have like four minutes, I'll go through my trades quickly. So this is AC ACB, and I did go through this one. Let me actually see what else I traded. I traded SPR. SPR was a loser for me. So this is SPR, dropped down a lot, got extended from the nine moving average on the five minute chart. On the one minute chart, sort of an increasing volume, not really increasing volume, but slightly increasing after it broke this area right here and then immediately got back into the range where I took it to the long side. Really tight stop loss, got stopped out and I got stopped out with the slippage because I was mad here. I put a stop loss of 3 cents on a stock which has 2 cents spread. I didn't pay attention to that so I lost here 1.7R. This was a loser. Um, I traded TBIO. TBIO, same thing, extended from the 9 moving average on the 5 minute chart, right? Started to hold on up there, a doji. Tried to break up, couldn't. Another doji and a new 1 minute high. Oh, sorry, new 1 minute low. Took it to the short side, stop loss above the bodies, and then started partialing all the way down to this on this one. CGC, same thing, extended from the 9 on the 5, doji at the high of the day after the breakout. Took it to the short side on a new one minute low, stop loss right around the week right here. And I got stopped out, which is totally fine. The setup doesn't work all the time, right? What happens after that? It breaks out, makes an engulfing. I don't short a lot of times after engulfings. But this way, this right here, it was short after an engulfing. Not like this, like here it was going up. And then you're having an engulfing and a new low. That I don't like. If I see an engulfing after a breakout, so it's going up, consolidating, breaking out, and then making an engulfing and getting back into the range, this is what I like. Not all the times, but most of the time I like it. I take it to the short side, put my stop loss around the week, starting to take partials, left 15% of my position to run, and just put my limit order. Where did I put my limit order? There it is. I put my limit order at the daily level. And this is actually, Adrian, what I told you to do right here. Just leave a little bit of your position to run. That wasn't a lot of my position. That was around 10% of my position only. And put your target at a daily level or a level you believe it will hit right there. So I see that you see it was really extended. It finally started reversing. It got into view up. It's not really strong. What I'm doing, I'm setting a range order. Stop loss either at break even or at a daily level. I could have used the low of the day. I could have used the next daily level, but I tried to make my stop loss at a realistic level it could reach which was the daily level right there a little bit above it and that was my last 10 percent and by the way this 10 percent it gave me more than one r because my stop loss there it was around five cents and it made around 70 cents move it was even one more than one r with only 10 percent remaining of your position so you could make decent amount of money if you leave some of your position mm, to run there let's go through one more trade I'll go through a loser, a skill, just to show you that not all of them are working out and that's totally fine for me. Same thing, stock is dropping a lot, on the daily it's really strong, closing as a hammer on the 1 minute chart, I'm taking it to the long side on a new 1 minute high, stop loss right below the previous week right there, it got me stopped out and then it made the move. And I'm totally fine with it because this is my, these are my rules, I don't use the low of the week, I don't use half of the week. I use the previous closest potential support. A lot of times it works for me. Sometimes it doesn't. We, uh, in which case I'm totally fine with it. So yeah, those are some of my trades today. We're literally out of time right there. If you guys have any questions here on YouTube or on YouTube, feel free to ask. Where is YouTube? That's it. There is YouTube. How long are you in a trade? I'm in a trade until I either hit my reward. Uh, or it gets me stopped out at break even after a partialing, or if it starts forming a setup against me. Amen. What times of a day do you find stocks to be most influenced by the spy and times that stocks are very independent? So, Anna, that really actually could vary. 
the stock could start the day following the spy, then it could get some news and it could start getting independent of the spy. Sometimes the stock are, is getting some news at the open, it's independent of the spy, then the volume starts dying in and later on the day it starts following the spy. One thing you could do is just simply watch the 15 minute chart. 15 minute chart of the spy and the stock which you are watching right now. If they are looking similar to the spy and you don't want to trade the stock which is following the spy, then don't trade that stock, just avoid it. If it looks like on the 15 minute chart it's really independent of the spy, then you don't really need to care about the spy because it didn't influence it before, it wouldn't influence it at least for the next few minutes. You are welcome everyone and have a good day. If you have any questions, you can always email me, aman at beerabletraders.com. On YouTube, I'm going to type it and I think on our community, you all guys don't know my email and the email of any other moderator. It's the name and at beerabletraders.com. Have a good one. Uh, have a good day. Trade safe. Don't overtrade and see you in the chat room.